Hi guys and welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Thank you for being here. Today's video. How an onstage brawl with Deep Purple helped launch ACDC's career. Being a rock star is more than just playing music. It's way of life. This is a form of music born out of a rebellion, meaning that rebellious spirit has to be in everything a rock star does, whether it is in the music they play, how they act on stage or across the street. This mindset is why ACDC struggled to get off the ground, but in an incident with Deep Purple was sure to change everything. ACDC had good music and musicians and were ready to get their names out there. So after acquired uh, Bon Scott, the band's manager, Michael Browning, uh, decided it would be good to get them playing on some new stages and living in a different city. With that, the band upped uh, sticks and headed to Sid from Sydney to Melbourne. Music scene in Melbourne was more vibrant and the band's sound uh, would likely be better received there. However, because there was already quite an established music scene within the city, it took a lot of work for ACDC to take, be taken seriously. Many other bands turned their noses up at them, and fans didn't welcome their arrival with open arms. That is, until the Sunbury Festival. The Sunbury Festival was one of the group's first gigs, which was a big deal, uh, given that there were so many big names on the bill and about 45,000 people in attendance. Essentially, it was equivalent to Woodstock, except it was in Australia rather than America. Instead of peace and love being thrown around, it was beer cans and punches. Deep Purple headlined this event, and ACDC was set to go on after them for a graveyard shift set. However, when they took the stage, they were horrified to see that Deep Purple had taken all their gear. There was no way the band could play without their instruments and kit, so the remaining members of Deep Purple's team, who were still packing some stuff away, were on the receiving end of ACDC's fury. Manager Michael Browning gave the band permission to start throwing punches, to which they happily obliged. Members of the band, their roadies, and their team were all encased in a brawl on stage, and the paying punters could only stand by and watch. At ACDC, my road crew, George Young, and myself in a major brawl with all of Deep Purple's crew and manager, recalled Browning, a full-on brawl in the middle of the stage. ACDC trading blows with one of the biggest bands in the world at the time was undoubtedly newsworthy, and it happened. And as it happened, people all over Melbourne uh, couldn't stop talking about the upper, upper cut and comers. Uh, it meant that a few months later, they released their debut album, High Voltage, there were a lot of people who wanted to listen. The album succeeded, and ACDC was projected into the rock stratosphere. It just goes to show that it really is a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, and you might have to break a few noses on your way. I think it's funny how uh, it takes something like this. You know, I don't know. I mean, they had the talent. They had the music. Uh, probably one of the more unique rock and roll bands out there. And Lord knows they had the talent. Uh, and they, and they had their own sound. Uh, a lot of bands out there, they kind of sound generic. ACDC's got a sound. You hear the first chord, man, and you know who the band is. Uh, anyway, I just thought this was kind of neat. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia. Please check that out. Subscribe. Please don't forget to subscribe here. Please like this video. And please share it out with your family and friends if they're into this type thing. You guys have a great day. God bless. And I'm praying for you.